What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we are here with the Eternity City Enders for the Week 3 Team Matchup Analysis where we will be facing the Portland Timbers. Now of course the Portland Timbers are coached by RTK623. Of course his uh, information for his Twitter and his channel will be in the description. He has actually not lost either of his first two battles. So, while I would love to be the first person that he loses against, this will require some extensive planning because there is a reason he hasn't lost either of his two battles. Granted, they were really close matches, uh, but still, there's a lot of skill there. So looking at his team, we see Sylveon, Latios, Melodic, Hitmontop, Metagross, Rotom Heat, Frostlass, Excadrill, Go-Goat, and Electrode. Now in the team uh, matchup on the team tabs, he actually hasn't brought uh, his Electrode or his Go-Goat or his Frostlass to either of the first two matches. Um, the first thing I noticed there, and of course on my team, please take note that I did switch out Talonflame for Kafagrigus. Uh, shout outs to my co-coach, kind of their uh, Aqua Cluncher or Aiden, who made the suggestion. There were a few other things that I wanted to switch it for, but I just didn't have the, the money to do it. So I decided to go for Kafagrigus because he would give me a little bit of latitude later on down the line to get a little bit of money to make another switch if I needed to because I got a lot of money back from switching out Talonflame. Uh, and I, I like switching out Talonflame for this matchup in particular. He has Rotom Heat, and I know he's probably going to bring it to the battle. Rotom Heat just is such a good top to stop to Talonflame that it wouldn't help out at all. In the same line of thinking, Having Kafagrigus in this battle might be really useful. And I have a, an odd team matchup here. Not only does he have several really, really strong special attackers with Sylveon and Latios, uh, of course, Rotom, he can go offensive, Frostlass, and uh, a mixed Metagross isn't out of the question at all either. I don't think he'll bring an Electrode. He might just for something that's fast and can paralyze things. Uh, but generally, just based on the trend that I've seen, he's going to be using Sylveon and Latios as kind of his wall breakers and then cleaning up with Excadrill to an extent. So with all that in mind, that means that here uh, I really want to keep pressure on his team overall. Interestingly, he doesn't have a single Mega Pokemon on his old team. So not only does that give him a lot of versatility with the items that he might use, but he does have the wonderful surprise factor there. Um, I do like bringing Mega Lopunny to this battle, as it can hit everything on his team, at least neutrally. Um, and I think it can, besides maybe defensive Melodic or defensive Metagross, it can basically 2 it KO his whole team. I, I actually, probably not go goat either, unless I use Ice Punch. Uh, so that's some nice power to be packing there. I do feel pretty comfortable bringing High Jump Kick into this matchup. Um, I, I, in fact, I think I'll need its power to really muscle through some of his Pokemon. And also, I've established that I don't typically bring High Jump Kick Lopunny to battles. So, with that kind of in the background of my opponent's playstyle there, hopefully he'll think that I don't have it, and then I can just throw a High Jump Kick in his face. Granted, I haven't been using High Jump Kick also because I, I am liable to miss it. It does have 90% accuracy, but you guys see how I performed in the LBA. I missed 90 and 85% accuracy moves like it's my job. So, we're gonna try that out this battle, I think. Uh, Drain Punch just doesn't quite get the job done, and he has several Pokemon that are bulkier, so I think High Jump Kick, Law Punny will be the way to go. Uh, furthermore, I'm kinda hesitant to bring Tyranitar here. While it will be nice to trap Latios, um, and to, well, I wouldn't really be trapping Metagross, but I could do a decent amount of damage to Metagross, uh, and I could trap Frost, Frostlass with Pursuit. I do run into him possibly running Sandrush Excadrill if I decide to bring my Tyranitar. And granted, that is a 50-50 shot, but I'd much rather not bring Tyranitar and not set up the Sandstorm and have him bring Excadrill and have it with just a useless ability. Uh, so that's kind of where that possibility lies. It is a 50-50. I might still bring Tyranitar, just maybe not with the Smooth Rock. Um, an offensive Tyranitar would actually do okay here, but he does have so many things to hit Tyranitar too that it's not really a great look. Because Sylveon, Melodic, Hitmontop, Metagross, Excadrill, and Gogo -Go all get super effective stab coverage on Tyranitar. And that's kind of why I didn't end up bringing Tyranitar last week too, just the sheer amount of coverage against it. Granted, Tyranitar can take a hit, 
and kind of keep on going, but why put myself in that position and possibly set up a sandstorm for his escadrille in the first place. Um, now, outside of Mega Lop Honey, I really like Kofagrigus here. Kofagrigus Florges is a fantastic core against his team. Um, of course, Kofagrigus is really only weak to opposing ghost type attacks and dark type attacks, and in this situation, the Portland Timbers only have opposing ghost with Frostlass. Now, he may run random knockoff on... He can run knockoff on... Can he, can he run knockoff on him on top? He can't run knockoff on him on top, excuse me. Him on top does not get knockoff. So, he could... I guess he could just randomly have some hidden power dark or something like that. I don't see him doing that. But my point is, is that Florges, who resists dark, being a fairy type, can come in and take those expected hits. Um, it also allows me to compete somewhat with the Sylveon as far as wish passing and team support goes. Of course, Sylveon does have a much higher, especially offensive presence. And actually, since I'm not bringing Tyranitar, Calm Mind uh, Florges is not a terrible idea here. Calm Mind Florges sets up on, on a number of his members, including Latios, Melodic, Hitmontop, and Rotom Heat. So, Calm Mind Synthesis, Moonblast, and then a coverage move, as long as Excadrill is out of the picture, can be a serious way to hurt his team, too. Um, another thing I can do, of course, is just with uh, Kofagrigus, it allows me the latitude of just burning a lot of his members. Rotom Heat is the only thing that he has that doesn't that can't get burned. And then he has so many Pokemon that don't want to be burned, such as Hitmontop, Metagross, Excadrill, and Go Goat, that it's just it's worth bringing just so I can have that burn chance on things. That is a pretty obvious strat, so I wouldn't be surprised if he had Lumberry on something just to come in and absorb a burn. But I really like Kofagrigus for that utility. Um, I do need to decide if I want to bring Physically Defensive Kofagrigus or a uh, Specially Defensive Kofagrigus. Wow, I'm, I'm saying Kofagrigus so many times and getting tongue-tied here. But uh, he has more of a Specially Offensive Presence than he does Physical. Let's see, Sylveon, Latios, Melodic, Rotom Heat, Frostlass, and Electrode are all going to be special. So that's 6 out of his 10 Pokemon. So that's slightly more. So it does make kind of a little bit more sense to bring a Physical Kofagrigus. But, based on the way that I lost to a Metagross recently in battle, to not have a way to check things like Metagross and Excadrill seems a little bit silly, especially when uh, I'm not going to be using Floor just to absorb hits, and of course it can't absorb those Steel-type hits anyway, so a physically defensive Kofagrigus paired with a specially defensive Floor just, that seems like the way to go as far as a core goes here. He's going to have a lot of trouble breaking through it, and Kofagrigus can set up Toxic Spikes, which will be awesome, especially because the Pokemon that I want to burn, mainly Metagross and Excadrill, they can't be poisoned, they're steel types, so setting up Toxic Spikes to really wear down some of his other Pokemon, or at least force him on top of Excadrill to spin instead of attacking, I really like that way of thinking. So, so far we have Mega Lawpunny, a physically defensive Kofagrigus, and a specially defensive Florges. Um, moving forward, I do like the coverage that um, Reuniclus gets on his team. He does have Sylveon, but outside of something that's Scarfed, nothing that he has can outspeed my Noivern besides Electrode, and I, Electrode can't do much to Noivern. Um, so just being able to drop Draco Meteors or at the very least Hurricane on his team, I like that utility there. I don't like relying on Hurricane because it just tends to miss, but I also tend to miss Draco Meteor. So 70% accurate, 90% accurate, it doesn't matter. I will probably miss it at some point. But, assuming that I hit, it'll be a good way to kind of just get some chip damage off against this team. I didn't really get a chance to see what Specs Noivern could do for my team last week, and so maybe doing something more like Life Orb would be better. Uh, it's hard to say. The only thing that he has that can set up entry hazards, of course, is Excadrill, and um, he can, of course, remove entry... Well, I guess Metagross can set him up too, but he can remove entry hazards with him on top and Excadrill, uh, and, of course, Electro can taunt. Or Latios can defog, so he has quite a few ways to get rid of entry hazards. So it'll be nice to force him into using those options. Because uh, that means he's not attacking me if he's getting rid of my entry hazards. Now, Lee Vanny is not a great Pokemon to bring to this matchup. Uh, it does get pretty nice coverage on Latios and Melodic. But it would have to hit Latios on the switch in. Um, and after that, it's not going to take a hit from Latios. And Melodic is liable to take any one hit from Lee Vanny, even a fully invested Leaf Storm, and then Mirror Coat it back and KO me, 
or just hit me with an ice beam. Scald burns will neuter the X Scissor. Uh, he has enough Pokemon grounded that Sticky Web might be annoying for him, but at the same token, my team is fast enough with certain members that I don't need that I need to, I don't know that I need to set up Sticky Web here. Um, that is a possibility though, setting up Sticky Web alongside Tyranitar. Then if he, if he does bring the uh, Sandrush X Control with Sticky Web up, he would have to spin and he would be losing that speed on the on the incoming, so he wouldn't be able to sweep me with extra drill. Um, I do like Reuniclus here for the same reason that I like Florges. The only way he really has to hit Reuniclus is with Frostlass, and that is just something that I'm not very worried about going into this matchup with. Frostlass, of course, is a ghost type, but with my scrappy ability on uh, Low Punny, I can hit it with a super effective Drain Punch or a high jump kick. So that is a possibility. I do need to watch out for entry hazard stacking here if he, try, if he decides to go Frostlass and Excadrill, which is what makes me want to bring Kabutops. Kabutops also isn't terrible because uh, if he decides to go Scarf Excadrill or Sandrush Excadrill or Scarf Rotom Heat, then I can still outspeed those Pokemon and hit them with Aqua Jets. And if he decides to bring in something that's a little bit more bulky, such as Melodic, I can still hit that with Stone Edge. So I do like Kabutops a little bit more in the sand though. So that means that I would be bringing Kabutops. Um, and if I'm bringing the sand, of course, I don't want to use the Calm Mind Florges. So I have a couple of different strategies at play there, but I do, I like the latitude that I have with different strategies. Um, but for now, I'm tentatively definitely going to say Law Pony, Cofagrigus, Florges, and then most likely Reuniclus and maybe Noivern and Kabutops is what I'm going to say right now. Uh, uh, so the secondary team, of course, would be Tyranitar and then just running a regular Wish Passing Florges alongside Reuniclus and Kabutops. So it, it kind of depends. It really does. I don't like bringing... Uh, it, it's kind of odd to not bring Toxicroak to a matchup where I know my opponent has a, a very bulky fairy type. But it's so easy for Toxicroak to get kind of trapped in here as far as entry hazards go and he has several Pokemon that I'll speed Toxicroak 2 and Sucker Punch is pretty good against several members of his team like Latios and Metagross and to a lesser extent Electrode just because how fast Electrode is but it's pretty obvious in his usage so Toxicroak is not a bad member to bring to I just have to play a little bit more smartly than I played last week with it so Toxicroak might be worth a mention too but at least I have that those first three in stone knowing what core I'm bringing and then knowing that I can basically 2-hit KO everything on his team with my Law Putty is kind of going to be the way to go into this battle. Um, I need to avoid Hazard stacking on his side, and I also need to discern which of his Pokemon is Scarfed, if any, pretty quickly, otherwise he's going to pick up some surprise KOs. Um, if I decide to bring Tyranitar, I need to know if Excadrill has Sand Rush, so I have to, number one, pay attention to the prompt, see if that Mole Breaker prompt pops up, um, and definitely don't leave with Tyranitar, because then he might get off an early sweep or something like that. But there's a few different things at play here. I definitely think my team has a chance to win this battle. And it'll be interesting either way. So we'll just hope for a good match. And I'm going to do my best to play my best. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do my best to play my best. I'm just going to play my best. There's no point in doing my best. Just, just, just do it. We're going to go Nike. I'm not sponsored by Nike, so don't take any of that into consideration. Nike, if I see a copyright strike on this, I swear... Okay, anyways, have a good day, guys, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.